Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Line School. Has anybody ever told you that you need to just simply bite the bullet? Or that happened like a flash in the pan? Well, gun verbiage, gun vocabulary has become very prominent in our modern vocabulary. What I want to do is share with you the Kentucky Long Rifle and where some of that comes from. The first one that I would dare say most everyone is familiar with is something being described as lock, stock, and barrel. That means something's been done in its entirety. So this rifle is a good representation of that. In essence, what you have, most people understand, is the barrel. And you have the stock, which on this particular rifle starts at the butt end and goes all the way out on this Kentucky Long Rifle to the very end. And then you have the lock itself. The lock is the mechanism here on this flintlock that is the firing mechanism for this rifle. So to have a full rifle, it needs to have a lock, a stock, and a barrel. Now another one that I'm sure a lot of us have heard is bite the bullet, which in the modern vocabulary has come to mean just suck it up, buttercup, deal with it. Whatever you got to do, get through this process and make it happen. Back in the day, uh, pre-Revolutionary War and maybe even later times, it is surmised, that surgeons, doctors, uh, nurses, whatever, if they were working on somebody who required some sort of difficult surgery, because there was not anesthesia, they would give a bullet to someone so that they could bite down on it because it was going to be very painful. In essence, what they're doing is setting you up so you can bite on it and not break your teeth. So if you put something hard in the mouth, they might break their teeth. So you put a lead bullet, think about that for a second, a lead bullet so they could bite the bullet. Now another one that's not in widespread use but does see a lot of use in, particularly in the gun community and even in some outdoor communities, is keep your powder dry. And there's a lot that goes into keeping your powder dry. For a flintlock rifle of this type, this is a Kentucky Long Rifle, there's several things to consider. Number one, you're going to have powder that goes into the end of the barrel. That's going to be a certain grade. And then you have a priming powder as well. And the priming powder goes into the pan. We're going to go in great detail about this in just a minute. But in essence, what happens is because black powder is very susceptible to moisture, when you put it into the rifle, put it into the pan, or you simply carry it around in your pouch, you don't want it to get wet. That's why watertight containers such as horns were a good choice for the frontiersmen in keeping their powder dry. Now add to that, right here in the rifle where the powder goes into the pan, which is gonna be the charge that sets the rifle off, what you have is you have powder that's basically on the outside of the rifle itself. So this is very susceptible to water, particularly in rain. So if you are a frontiersman or you're utilizing this rifle, you want to do everything you can to keep this covered. Some folks would have designed a piece of leather, leather that they would wrap over this so it would keep this dry or keep the rain off of it. Uh, you could use beeswax on the leather to keep it more water repellent. But in essence, if that black powder gets wet, it's not going to fire the rifle properly. And if that doesn't fire the rifle properly, you're not getting your food and you're not taking care of your personal safety. So a lot of people will give you the adage of keep your powder dry. Now another one that does get a lot of widespread use is flash in a pan. Flash in a pan in the modern vocabulary means something that uh, has a lot of promise and then it doesn't carry through or it fizzles out or something of that nature. That comes directly from the use of a flintlock rifle. In essence, what you have here is you have a rifle that when it's ready to go, there's a pan here. You put priming powder in that pan and then you close this portion of the apparatus. And when you pull the trigger, it's going to strike a piece of flint against the frizzen. When that hits, it's gonna throw that up. It's gonna throw a spark down into the pan of black powder and what's supposed to happen is that black powder is supposed to go through into the barrel through the touch hole. The touch hole then ignites the powder that's in the barrel. What happens sometimes is that you don't have a good charge that goes all the way through the touch hole. So in essence what, in essence what happens 
is that it is a flash in the pan. There's a big flash, but nothing happens to the gun. It does not go boom. So that is a nice promise, a good start, but it doesn't actually carry through. Now what I'm going to set up for you is a simulation where the powder, let's say, in the barrel is wet and doesn't go off. What I'm going to do is simply put some priming powder into the pan. I'm going to fire the weapon so that you can see what happens when there's a flash in the pan. What we want to do to set this particular rifle up is we want to hit the set trigger, pull it back to half cock. That's important. That's another one going off at half cocked. We want to get our priming powder. Put priming powder into the pan. Doesn't take much. And then what I like to do after I put my powder away is I like to shake it and make sure that there is powder into the touch hole. Close the pan, blow any extra off, cock the rifle so it's ready to fire, and this is what it looks like when I shoot it. So that's what I mean by flash in the pan. In essence, what's happening is, again, the powder that's in the priming pan is getting ignited by the flint, but it's not traveling through that pick hole. So you have a big flash right here, nothing happens. That's the flash in the pan. Hey, let's do one more. You've probably heard somebody described as going off half cocked. What we mean by that in the modern terminology is somebody that is doing something prematurely. They're talking out of turn, they're saying something they should have before they should have said it. They've done some sort of work that they shouldn't have done. They are going off half cocked, not ready, they're not prepared or something of that nature. That is a direct analogy coming from muzzle loading rifles and I'm going to demonstrate with this one where that comes from. The way most of these rifles operated is you had a set trigger. That's the one that I have here in the back. So I pull it to set it. That gets the locking mechanism ready to work. Then I can pull the hammer back. That's half cock. I can fill up my priming pan, which I'm not gonna do for this exercise right here, put the frizzing down. And then what should happen is if I pull the front trigger, nothing happens. It should not go off. If it goes off, it's gone off half cocked, meaning it's gone off when it shouldn't have. The way this should work, is we're going to lower this down. So again, we set the trigger, we pull it half cock, we put our powder into our priming pan, we put the frizzing down, and now this is how we go about hunting or whatever it is that we're going to do. When it's time to shoot, we then pull it back to full cock, and then it'll go off. Hey, I hope you found this enjoyable, maybe even educational. Uh, I really enjoy muzzleloading rifles, particularly the Kentucky Long Rifle, since I'm a Kentucky boy. So that's some things that we utilize in our modern vocabulary that come directly from gun culture, particularly these older style weapons. Uh, as I've gone through these, I've come up with maybe four or five more. So if y'all like this video, we might do another one and look at some of the vocabulary that we use, like, hey, somebody's going ballistic or any number of things that we might utilize. But again, Appreciate your history from where you're from. Study it. That way we're not doomed to repeat it. As always with Nature Reliance School, come on, join in. Let's learn together.